Okay, uh, maybe I should uh, move on and, and talk about how we can go from coefficient form to evaluation form. So starting with some polynomial, we would like to evaluate it at four different points. Um, and perhaps we can start with a, a nice concrete example using the finite field F5. So this is the finite field that has five elements. You can think of it basically as the, the clock arithmetic or the modular arithmetic that Paul presented a few weeks ago. You know, whenever you get a number, you take the remainder when you dividing by five and, and that get, gets you your, your new number. Um, so let's choose some random basically coefficients here. I've sort of chosen them arbitrarily. We have the polynomial 3x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. And we let's say that we want to evaluate it at these four points, point 1, 2, 3, and 4. So one way we could do this, as I was sort of alluding to, was brute force, right? So right, we can evaluate p1 by just sort of multiplying things out, right? We have one cubed, two cubed, one squared, one, all of those are equal to one. And so if we add all these up, we get 12, which is equal to two mod five. Um, and so that, that would tell us b0 directly. Um, and then we could do the same thing for, for evaluating at two. We can do two cubed, two squared, two. We can multiply all of these numbers together and you know, you can use a calculator to check my math if you want. This comes out to 49, which is equal to 4 mod 5. And we can do the same thing with, with 3, and it comes out to 0 mod 5. And we can do the same thing with 4, and it comes out to 3 mod 5. But the sort of um, vaguely disappointing thing about doing things this way is that it's, you know, it takes a, a, actually a lot more time than you would want to. Um, and the reason why this is sort of a very slow algorithm for computing this essentially has to do with the fact that we're doing a lot of different multiplication operations here, right? So for, for each and every one of these evaluation points, there are, you know, four different numbers to raise to a power, four different multiplications to, to do, and there's four different... Uh, there's four different evaluation points. We're doing at least 16 multiplications right there. It's basically the, the square of the number of coefficients that we started with. And that's bad because, you know, it might be possible for this um, polynomial because there's only four elements here. But for the sort of polynomials that we're dealing with when we run a Stark protocol, you know, those can be very long, very high degree polynomials indeed. They can be, you know, almost as long as the, um, almost as long as sort of the, the execution trace of whatever program you're trying to, to verify. So doing this sort of n squared quadratic, you know, all of this work, this is, this is not the, it, the fastest way of doing things. And we sort of want to look for a better way. Um, but before, we look for a better way. Maybe it's it's helpful to just sort of realize the the structure of the problem as it already exists. So let me first point out that this this process of of multiplication can actually be viewed as a matrix equation or a, an equation in linear algebra if you're if you're familiar with that. So what you can see here is a matrix uh, multiplied by a vector, and that gives us another vector. And this, this matrix here is meant to represent the, the coefficients that we see in this set of four equations here. Right? So we have, um, we have ones all down the side here. We have one, two, three, four. We have one squared, two squared, three squared, and four squared. And we have one cubed, two cubed, three cubed, and four cubed. And so we basically make a four by four matrix out of those uh, out of those numbers. And then if we multiply by this vector here, which represents the the coefficients, right? These are the the four coefficients of the polynomial in coefficient form. Um, 
then doing this sort of matrix vector multiplication, that is, is giving us exactly what we want. It's giving us the, the vector of evaluations. And you might notice that this matrix here, it definitely looks very, um, it looks very structured, right? It's what you, you might sort of call mathematically structured. It's not just a bunch of random elements. You know, every single element of this column is a one. And this column, you're going one, two, three, four. You're sort of counting up. And in this column, you're going up by squares. And so there's definitely a pattern. Every every single element of this, this matrix follows a pattern. So let's see if we can um, sort of isolate what that pattern is. Um, one thing that we can do to, to make the matrix even sort of more structured is to rewrite things in terms of powers of two, right? This is something that, um, that we sort of saw last week in Paul's, uh, or two weeks ago, I should say, in Paul's presentation about uh, Reed-Solomon codes. That, that was another situation. And because Reed-Solomon codes are essentially polynomials, um, that was another situation where, where it turned out to be, um, it turned out to be mathematically useful to, to think of things instead of just as, as numbers in this finite field, we can think of them as, as powers of, of two. And it turns out that that all four of these numbers, one, two, three, four, can be re rewritten as a as a power of two. So maybe the first thing we can do is we can check, you know, how can we rewrite four as a power of two? Does anyone have a have a sort of conjecture about what power we can raise two to 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 get four? This is maybe too easy of a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two. I think I I think I heard two, and and that's right. So um, we can replace four by two to the second power, um, and that gives us basically an equivalent way of writing four. And now we can write three. We can rewrite three actually as a power of two as well. This is maybe a bit harder. Um, and I see a question in chat from Jacob: Was two chosen to be a generator of the field? or for some other reason? Um, and and the, the answer is yes, it was chosen to be a generator of the field. If you sort of recall from last week, Paul, uh, there was a bit of a discussion, bit of discussion about generators, but the, the nice thing about two is that you can raise it to, to different powers and you can get every non-zero element of the field. Um, and I see an answer in chat for the, the question of three, and it says that yes, two to the third power is actually three. And that's something you can sort of evaluate in your head. You know, two to the third power is eight, and eight mod five is equal to three. Um, so we can rewrite that. And, you know, we can actually rewrite the twos and ones as powers of two as well. Uh, so I'll just do that there. And we now that we have all of this, we can apply a rule to sort of simplify things. You know, if you have two to the power three to the power three, that's basically the taking an exponent twice is sort of the same thing as as multiplying those two exponents, right? Two to the three to the three is actually going to be the same as two to the three times three. And so if I do that rewriting, um, I get this matrix, which now has a very sort of um it's it's a little bit more verbose than what we had before, but it's also a little bit more um, clear what the sort of structure is here. Um, so now not only is it the case that we have two to the zero down the column, but we also see that we have two to the zero along the top here. And we have one, two, three here. And we have two, four, six here in the bottom row. And we have three, six, nine in this sort of middle row. Uh, row here. Um, now, we notice that the the exponents here are very close to being a multiplication table, and this is something I think we noticed in the in the talk two weeks ago as well. And so, if only it were the case that these two rows here were were switched around, 
um, then it would actually be a perfect multiplication ta table. So I'm going to you know, make one more change, which is to, to switch those rows around so that we can have that sort of perfectly line up. And that's sort of fine. All I have to do in this sort of matrix multiplication here is I switch these last two rows, I switch around the last two elements of this vector, and I switch around the last two elements of this vector, and every, everything sort of works out. So what we get here is a matrix, which is a sort of very special matrix. This is, it's known as the, the DFT matrix or a DFT matrix. You could think about a DFT matrix for a different generator, right? For example, three is also a number, which is a generator of this field. And so you could think about three to the zero, three to the zero, three to the one, three to the four. Um, but all that we, we see that to solve this sort of coefficient to evaluation problem, essentially all that we're doing is we have to find a, a very quick way of multiplying this, this matrix uh, to this vector. And while this would sort of, in general, it would be pretty hard because, you know, this is a pretty big matrix. It's, it's an N squared sized matrix. The fact that it's so structured, right? You know, basically every element of this matrix is two to um, the, this, L, this sort of multiplication table um, element. We, we conjecture and, and we'll see that perhaps there's actually a faster way of, of doing this transformation. Um, per, before I move on to that, maybe I'll, I'll pause for questions again. I think I, I have a quick comment about the size of the matrix as it relates to our system. So we see this example of like having four columns, but in reality, in risk zero system, the execution traces are powers of two. So these to just give people in the audience who might not be familiar an idea, this could be very, very large. Yeah. So that's yeah, yeah, that's definitely a, an important thing to note is that you know four four here is the the critical number, but instead of four, it would be it would really be the 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 number of cycles approximately of whatever programming you program you wanted to execute. And it's also worth noting that instead of F5, right, the, the field of numbers modulo five, it would actually be a much bigger field. In fact, much, much bigger, even bigger than the, the, the number of, of cycles, because it's important that um, you don't randomly get two field elements turning out to be the same when they shouldn't be the same. That's sort of a cryptographic important, cryptographically important thing. <clears throat> 